There we go. XCOM goes badly for everyone, yeah. Maybe maybe I just expected that I should be better, but actually I was playing it correctly. I was like, everything's just failing, everything is failing, and then but I just didn't realise that was maybe it was what was meant to happen. Through thick and thin. Despite Lucas' bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rolo. Oh yeah, so we fell out with our best friends. We both said some very harsh things to each other. But our gran has told us we've to build a bridge and get the fuck over it and just go make up. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air, but the events of the day weren't on his mind. I actually don't know if it was the first one. It was so long ago that I honestly couldn't even tell you. I would need to look at like my Steam to see which one I even own. He had to find Rollo. Cat. <laughs> Never apologize for cats. There you are. This is Rollo's big sister. Look up. Rollo wanted to make tell you something. Roxy rolled her eyes, shaking her head. This sigh, a space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If ye be brave, go somewhere quiet. Uh, Roxy, I don't. It's a riddle, Luca. My goofy little brother wants you to find him. Down and kicked at the dirt. I know you two had a fight. The only thing more annoying than my little brother is my little brother without his best friend. So I'm doing him this one favour. Now I need one favour from you. Whatever it is that went down between you two, squash it. You know, see, build a bridge and get the fuck over it. A 90s 2D pixel game. It was the it was XCOM 2 then I played. Okay, so we have to go and meet at the treehouse, that's what that means. Ooh, there's loads of stuff happening here. Oh, don't mind me. Just warming up for my big ceremony Mr. speech. Pointed to his grinning mouth. Got to lumber up the old gab box. Oh heavens, no! Break a leg, that guy is so creepy. I don't know who Perennial Harvest thinks they're impressing with this ridiculous festival. Totally. This town's still falling apart. The weather's still cruddy. And this season's harvest looks like it's going to be worse than last year's. You said it. No amount of corporate pandering is going to change any of that. But the lemonade at the drink stand over there does look tasty. Fits. I'm still going to be mad at them. I'd just rather be mad while sipping some delicious lemonade. I mean... Why be thirsty and mad? It doesn't seem. Jeff was staring into the distance with a wistful look. Hey Jeff, everything all right? <laughs> yeah, everything's fine. I mean, it used to be fine. Just ain't right these days, you know. I know. Jeff turned to Luca with a furrowed brow, then gave an understanding nod. You do, don't you? For a moment, the two now shared that same wistful gaze. This, this piano, though. There's nothing like a 95% miss into squad wipe to get the rage going. Unexplained sound once again noted. Like clockwork. What a bunch of drones. Ain't moving. Okay. How goes the beetle hunt? Pretty rotten. I haven't seen so much as an excuvee. 
And it's not just the beetles. This morning I couldn't find any critters. It's like everything that buzzes or scares just packed up and left. Maybe all the commotion of the festival spooked them. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Did you hear? After Mr. Care gives his big speech, they're going to have the first annual catch competition. As long as a book qualifies a catch, I'm a shoo -in. Can I find anything more to fish in this? I think there's still space. Oh, yeah, look. Luca wrapped a twig of thyme around the hook. Nice. Some fish have refined taste. Who are you? I'm the one who grew you type and raised you from perdition. Yeah, 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 you can link, sorry. I was late responding, but you're good. Thanks, Kimo. There are, like, no restrictions on this channel. <laughs> I just fly by the seat of my pants and hope for the best. Property of Sharper Valentine figures. If he had his way, Property of Sharper Valentine would be written on everything. Should we give it back? He may not even want it. Man's got a contentious relationship with time. We'll keep it here in case he wants to pick it up. I think that looks like everything. Like, the sheet's actually, like, full. Wait, is he not here? I thought this is where we were meeting him. A space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If you be brave, be some go somewhere quiet. Well, it's not here. Okay. Would you like to share your thoughts? We always strive to improve. No. This is the first time I've seen this many smiling faces. I had my doubts, but I must admit, they do put out a nice party. You still reading? What's your book now? Oh, I can't get any more book quotes. What? You're actually taking a break from studying? I wanted to see you at the festival. I can't help but notice you still brought your backpack full of books. Listen, we don't judge people for carrying our own books, okay? It's reasonable. I mean, what if happens if you get stuck somewhere and you need to pass the time? I was able to return the safety suit you borrowed. I don't think anyone noticed. It was a favour for an enemy of an enemy. All you need to know is that it's for the good of the family. Mm. Seems sus. Oh, is it the library? Somewhere quiet. Kato's eyes lit with excitement. I've been expecting you. Bravo on deciphering the first riddle. Oh, you didn't think that was all, did you? Kato straightened up and cleared his throat as if preparing to sing. Got in with the chance that the shooter gets a heart attack just before they pull the trigger. If you're using time, you'd catch a time fish. Mm. Hey, Audra, how are you doing? No book judgment here, I know, right? Kyle straightened up and cleared his throat. <clears throat> On planet Farpool, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Kato stared at Luca eagerly. Get it? Want me to tell you? No, it's okay, let me figure it out. Alright then. Bring it here to be verified. You can give me a hint. On planet Farpool, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Is 
still working through the harvest of Hank Atomic. You know it. Fascinating. Did you know Hank Atomic's shrink array doesn't technically shrink stuff? It uses inverse quantum particle decay to literally grow the entire universe around it, leaving that object unaltered. So it just looks shrunk compared to everything else. Bingo. That's wild. But Jace, no spoilers. I, I mean, you've pretty much been told the whole fucking book. The modern science of Once you've got a book, you can either bring it here to me or just grab a different one. Wait. Luca grabbed Natural Photography, Volume 5. Oh, I have to bring him the book, right, okay. Hold on. Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue Number 4. Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue Number 5. I think this is it. <laughs> ah, you Father found it! his book from the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. As he slid the book under the purple light, two words glowed. The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue 5. Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Rose cipher pen. He used to write secret messages everywhere with that. And only I had the special flashlight to reveal it. But I lost it. Well, apparently he traded Jeff for his purple light bulb. Partied with his entire Halloween candy stash. Oh, roll. Now let's see here. Kato began flipping through the pages, stopping when he hit a glowing word. How's it going? It's going good, thank you. I'm enjoying this so far. I'm about, well, I think I'm like halfway or something. I don't know. I don't actually know. I just know how long it roughly takes and how long I've been playing. I'm sure the correct one is here somewhere, yeah. You're thinking about playing this game this year? Nice. Yeah, I've been meaning to play this for ages. This and I actually want to play Night in the Woods as well. I don't know why both of those have just been on my like radar forever. Get away with such a grift. Only found in Grub. Cart. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. That's it. Grift in Grub Cart. Griffin, Griffin, Griffin's grub cart. He wants me to go to Griffin's stacks, snack stand. Ah, brilliant. I guess you're off then. I love that my character figured that out and not me. That's nice. Took me forever to get through though. Oh, is it a long game? You finished Night in the Woods? Oh, wait, is it not this? Oh, that's this guy. Okay. Hey, Griffin. Did Roll Before come? Luca could finish his sentence, Griffin handed him a corn dog. Oh, that's it. Bought and paid for. Enjoy. I thought there was supposed to be a riddle or something. Shrunk, taking a sizable bite out of the corn dog. Yuck. It's cold. Oh, yeah, it's been sitting here for a while. It wanted me to be sure to give you that one specifically. Well, that's Luca just. At his cheeks. Feeling something rough between his teeth, he reached into his mouth and pulled out a slip of paper. Oh, come he on. The bits of corn dog to read the slip. A pick up when you need some pep near the fountain up the step. Luca finished off the remainder of the corn dog. This is getting to be a whole thing. Beacon Pines is actually unincorporated. A lot of people don't know that. Wow, yeah, I didn't know that. What does that mean? It means most public works are handled internally. We do all the pipelines, the water treatment, building regulations. Hmm, that's great. Census taking. <laughs> Emergency services. <laughs> it says 12 hours, but I think it took me like five sessions or so. Oh my god. Main story is nine hours. You have 11 hours in it. Hey, Sophia. I, I don't even. I was talking about. It's funny because I was actually talking about corn dogs. Going to the coffee place. Uh, not long ago. There you are. There's no way I'm actually doing this. It's weeble my pay grade. Oh, come on, you big stiff. Let the kids have some fun. But Rolo owes me. He waved his hands around sarcastically as he began. Or a political scientist, yeah. 
What takes flight but has no wings, your final task a friendship brings. See, that wasn't so hard. Ugh, I feel cheapened. I think it's sweet. What takes flight but has no wings, your final task a friendship brings. Did you find the comic book? Yep. And you got the corn dog? Yeah. Well then, I know it doesn't make up for what I said, but here you've earned this. Oh, sheepishly handed Luca the balloons. Thanks. You didn't have to go out with this trouble. I'm sorry I got so mad. Dang it, you were supposed to let me apologize first. Oh, sorry. Now you've apologized twice. Just let me do this. Luca, I'm really sorry. With everything that's happened with your mum and all, I've always wanted to be there for you. Be a good friend, you know. When you said you were hanging out with someone else, I kind of freaked out. Rolo, still my turn. I felt like if you needed some new friend to help you, it meant I wasn't good enough. But that was selfish. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Okay, apology over. You can talk now. Threw himself at Rolo, hugging him as oh my god, you got a bow anymore. <laughs> I don't deserve you. Oh, these kids need to like just ca calm down with the feelings. What else do you want to do today? We could snoop around and try and find some info about your mom. Snoop where? We could probably sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ while everyone's at the festival. Aren't you curious about all the stuff those clipboards write down? What if we get caught? I think I've had enough excitement for one week. Let's just make the rest of the day about us. Really? Yeah, the rest of the world can wait one more day. You know, I've been wanting to have some work done on the MCDC mission control. The aim is a bit unpredictable. That sounds perfect. I wonder if I can do a new... Oh, I think I've got all the fishing stuff actually, I don't know. I almost forgot. I ran into your gran. She asked me to give you this. I'll wait for you inside if you want to read it. A letter? Luca, some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you Aren't to they understand. just precious? If I am honest, I hardly understand them myself. But whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. What the fuck? Where's my, what is my gran doing? None of this is fair to you. You have already lost so much. We both have. I wish there was a simpler way forward. But if there is, I haven't thought of it. God knows I've tried. Everything I've done. Her. I did for you. I hope someday you can accept that. Love, Gran. Luca folded the paper into his pocket and headed up the ladder. Granny's definitely skipped town. Anything you want to talk about? Maybe later. Sure, whenever you want. You know, you really don't have to go to all that trouble just to apologise. I know, but we've been looking forward to the festival for weeks and I ruined everything with my big mouth. This was the best way to make sure you still had a good time without me. Luca was at a loss for words. But that was fine. Words aren't always necessary. Festival seemed nice, was it nice? We can still go. Nah, this is fine. Well, there's always next Sadly. year. This was untrue. Oh. A distant rumble shook the treehouse. Didn't use a pop filter on her mic, yeah. I think she still sounds like fine though. We missed the fireworks. It was, not fireworks. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. Something as old and cruel as time itself. What? A shockwave of cold tore through the room. A bitter, unfathomable chill. Holy shit.
Sorry, but right, right there, the weather here just absolutely started belting. <laughs> Holy crap. That was so funny. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit, the wind and rain? Fuck me. Before they could react, it encased them in ice. Two boys, reunited by friendship, only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond reason. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene, in a silent treehouse turned statuary, in a town brought low by its secrets, sits a pair of friends, alone, together, for the rest of time. The end. No, that can't be the ending. It simply can't. I won't accept it, and I hope you won't either. There are more endings. More possibilities. I, I can feel it. We are just going to have to sort through them all until we find the one that fits. Okay. We have another option here we can choose. We've done everything there. We've done everything there, there. Done everything there. And we've got another option here. So let's redo this one first. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Sure, you can meet Ro. You're not going home? No, I promised Ro would tell him Luca about- Luca stopped himself mid-sentence. Promised him he'd tell what? Spit out, bub. We're thick as thieves now. Is there a juicy secret you've got to tell me? Right, okay, calm down. We've only just met. You can come to the treehouse and I'll tell you both what happened. Heck yeah. Luca saw Beck skulking by the gate. You're telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate, looming mansion, rich reclusive owners, it even smells Beck shady. Grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. Make my words your decadent nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me. What did you do? First of all, I told you so. Second, hide! That's Eris Valentine? Who's she talking to? Shh. I expect you to return the suit in working order, of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned, there's nothing to worry about. The only thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. If that means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. Now this is what I'm talking Beck's about. Voice was an excited whisper. Proper shady stuff. Someone in that suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You don't understand that when this all inevitably fails, I will deny everything. I wouldn't expect any less of you. Just you just worry about your part in this. Let me handle the rest. Can't wait to see the look on that Rube Care's face. Yes, the truth will come to light. I'm still surprised you're so comfortable with the potential collateral damage. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that change is painful. Wow, I was expecting Shady, but that's just fly out supervillain talk. You don't mind me asking, why? Why are you doing the this? The mysterious figure retracted their mask. Hair pushing out from all corners. Is it the Gran? <gasps> it is the Gran! It's the fucking Gran! Family. The ran down Luca's spine, his vision blurred. Beck stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. An answer I can certainly respect. Gran tussled her hair back under the face mask. Just remember, keep everything nice and normal until the festival. I don't need Am lessons and rousing Show suspicion. Enough. Am I the prettiest? <laughs> Show sure enough. Am I the baddest mofo low down around this town? The call came from inside the house. Ugh, welcome in, Trooper. Gran gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. Chapter 
chapter five. Guys, there's so much birthday cake downstairs and none of it is dairy free and I can't eat it. It's so sad. <laughs> this is my first birthday since having to go dairy free. This is the first time I've had to experience three birthdays in one month in my house and all of the birthday cakes being inedible. So I went and bought myself a big massive chocolate bar to cheer myself. <laughs> what big ears you have. Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. I mean, I buy the cakes, but I wouldn't make my husband and daughter get, like, shit dairy-free birthday cakes just so I can eat it. Like, because they're not good. I've not found a good birthday cake, so I just get them the cakes that they want and they can enjoy it and I'll just buy my own desserts and eat it separately. I don't want everyone else to suffer just along with me. <laughs> that seems that seems mean. What's wrong? Uh, oh, you've seen a ghost. Why are you so scared of the old lady in the suit? That was my gran. That was your gran? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. Let's just get to the treehouse and figure things out. Okay, let's let's get the fuck out of here. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Of course, we're not worried. The board finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just dottering her eyes and crossing her T's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's. Creed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here acknowledging everything is accurate, we'll be out of your hair in a flash. Oh, for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. There. And would you like my eternal soul as well? I wouldn't laugh about I wouldn't moment, joke about that around these guys. The they do seem like soul snatchers. Then broke into laughter as they walked away. I want to use this telephone box, but it just never gave me the option. Hi, Mr. Uncreed. Look, I give me some, give you some advice. Next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, give him a good hard bop right in the kisser. Gran tells me just to keep away from the clipboards. That's good, that's good. Your gran is a smart lady. Speaking of which, you better run along home. Too dark to be out wandering on your own. Ain't that the truth? Another day, another dollar. See you tomorrow, Z. Have you noticed how all the perennial harvest folks order the same drink? Decaf, cappuccino, extra foam? Why? I don't know. Just thought it was a little odd. Pretty weird for sure. But the customer's always right. See you bright and early. Uh, can't wait. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. It's all coming together quite nicely. Couldn't have done it without you. Kerr gave a half-hearted shrug. This mirror looks real tired. He's right behind my, my camera, but he looks tired. In matters of taste, for fuck's sake. That reminds me, I wasn't able to thank your sister for her contributions. Yeah, she's been indisposed of late doesn't much like me, does she? Oh, it's not that. She's just been busy. Hmm. I will be forever grateful if you could pass my thanks on to her. The History Museum adds a real air of import to the whole affair. And we couldn't very well so celebrate the story of Beacon Pines without including the Valentines. My father was a great man. You're darn tootin'. Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. But I mean the entire Valentine family, present company included. Can I ask you something? Call me William. Ask away. Why are you doing all of this? Gosh, I never felt one needed a compelling reason to throw a party. Not just the festival, all of it. There's got to be a hundred down in their locked towns out there. Why is perennial harvest so invested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I love most about the agriculture business? Seeds. Seeds? 
Yep, little bundles of potential. With a in his eye, Kurt gestured grandly toward the horizon. Treat a seed right, nurture it, feed it. It can grow into something truly special. You see potential? Undoubtedly. The seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge. And the right leadership, of course. Good night, Mayor Valentine. Is this guy has to be like an animatronic? No one's face looks like that. Also, hold on. The music is just a little bit much right now. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Yeah, the treehouse is just a little further on. So what's your buddy Rolo like? He's Rolo, not particularly helpful. Sorry, just never thought about it. Lots of energy. He's funny, even when he's not trying to be. Things have been tough for his family since the fill harvest. It's about damn time you tell me what this fill harvest thing is. It's kind of a long story. Hit me with the highlights. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. It was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked. Farmers loved it. So Valentine's grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Most everyone in town either worked for Sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. I'm sensing a big butt. Around six years ago, Sharper Valentine suddenly died and something changed. Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water or air, the, the soil. Nobody knows. But all the crops died and everyone blamed the Valentines. The foul harvest. Yeah. Valentine's fertilizer went out of business and the town lost half the town lost their jobs. Sheesh. The next year the crops became, came back but something was different. You plant a crop, do everything right and it's sort of crapshoot what happens. And no one knows why? No. I take it Rose Farm got the short end of the stick. Yeah, for some reason their farm was hit harder than others. That sucks. Things have gotten better since perennial harvest came to town. The Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. Yeah, first thing they did was give the town a deep scrub. They even put us up in hotels one town over for a week while they can decontaminated the groundwater. Okay, that sounds super suspicious that they sent you all away for a week. <laughs> Sacrifice a goat. It's about time. I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name is Beck. You must be Rolo. I see my reputation precedes me. Welcome to Mission Control. Waggled his head with pride. You'll find we've spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thanks. Hey, look, I, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah. While I was waiting, I made some improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. <laughs> I love the car door window. Amazing. He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. Ah, the lavish charm, that's good. Oh, will be revealed in time. Yeah, I presume so, yeah. Now what? Wait, what's this? Oh. Oh man, I hate trying to aim in this stupid thing. Like how? There we go. I'm terrible. You had to do it with the football, it was horrendous. Oh my god, it's moving. Are you trying to kill me here? We did it, it's fine. I'm a professional. <laughs> Where did you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades us junk for snacks. Junk food for junk. Nice. That is impressive, I know. Pretty sweet security, right? 
It was imaginative, I'll give you that. Look at, are we sure we can trust this new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess. You promised to fill me in with the Valentine Warehouse? Um... Sucked in a long breath. So like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe there were squatters? I don't think so, it seemed more organised. When a man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask, then let go and ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Ares Valentine meeting with Gran, wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. A low whistle. And they weren't there for idle chit chat. It was a proper clandestine meetup. So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. Then you saw your gran in the same suit talking to Ares Valentine. Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Lolo and Luca shot back a look. No offence. And so we can logically conclude aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town. And their leader is your gran and she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it could have been my gran at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away and the mask my gran was wearing wasn't damaged. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your gran is weird but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know, we haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Your gran isn't from here? No, she came a few months ago, eh, a few months back to take care of me after after his mum went missing. Did you know your gran before? No, not really. It's been years since I'd seen her. Uh, so is this even his gran? Don't take this the wrong way, but are we sure your gran is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. I'm just saying. Sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. We could say the same thing about your family, but you're right. Look how your grant is hiding something. And pal was said folks only bury stuff worth digging up. You need to investigate your house. If my grand really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Gran's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear and we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. Gran is an alien. Yeah. Chapter six. Yeah. Yeah. Secret lair. Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed half dreading what they might discover the next day. Like, has she ever even slept in that bed? We've never seen her or that bed be used. He always says, like, she just falls asleep in front of the fire. Does she even sleep? What time is it? Man, can you imagine getting changed that fast? Be amazing. Also, I can't get into my parents' bedroom either. The door's locked. Rolo, what on earth is that? <laughs> He's that. That ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this. Helps me think. You're going to need a lot more of those. <laughs> Joe, call you one. We'll see you as laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear. Yeah, whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. If I were Gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Rollo flung open the cabinet with confidence. Aha! He coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again. Any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. 
Eureka! She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Ro. Drat, may already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to Ash. Okay. I'm going to stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca is there anyway. Luca, is there anywhere Gran doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first? No dice, it's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. And I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who has ever thought? I'm going to take this important thing and huck it in a bush. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well, she is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen, but it doesn't matter anyway. I can't reach the latch. Of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. All right, Ro, this is your time to shine. Ah, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. Now I shall proceed with- Before he could finish, Lucas scrambled up Rolo's back. Hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick, and every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining and hold still. Get it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. I mean, you could have just dragged a dining table, a dining chair over and stood on that, but, you know. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss, but the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh hey! Let me just yank on this random teacup and... Hold on one of the teacups. It slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Oh, look at the scratch marks on the floor. <gasps> Seems like your gran has been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret layers. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So which one do you think she is? We're about to find out. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe? Oh wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. What you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor. Nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Well, are you going to read it? I. Here, let me help. Rolo swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of a preeminent scholar in dense documents. <laughs> and cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. He stopped at a page and mimed, holding up a monocle. Ah, here we are. Follow-up examination of Terence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Up with heightened surprise. See? Creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Oh, the shop owner? Finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated, perhaps environmental. Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to his report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Through several more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast, and with his wife passing, Terence's condition follows close behind. 
Exasperated by the loss, enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. What does it say next? Lola rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be Luca more. Frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. I think there's only one. It's alphabetical. We'll see. What did he mean? Enough is enough. How did he take matters into his own hands? This is bullshit. Slam the drawer shut. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. She sure kept herself busy. Is your granny a serial killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town out of kindness of her heart. She put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My mums are both there on here. Both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. So have people, did Mr. Nuncreed like die and he's like been taken over? I think they're like animatronics or some shit. So it's not the real Mr. Nuncreed that's kicking about? That's why he's got a check mark. ARS has a question mark that's been crossed out. Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen our next victim. We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. Where's my achievement? I'm like a professional boxer or something. Really? Nothing? What do we have here? Caution, explosive, and jam jars? That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? <laughs> she wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs. Right? Only one way to find out. Casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Huckleberries. He his lips. And of brown sugar. And... Ink? What? Lolo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Oh. Lolo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. It's addressed to Mrs. Fratelli? A grand jam gram? <laughs> oh. Last night I used the disguise ARS provided to scout the location. The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark. Hug is a go. Oh man, are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. So more a bomb shell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. They crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't follow that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. Starts at the entrance to town. And if we follow it. Carefully trace the path with his finger. It leads he right to down at the end point. Town Square? That's the fountain in the middle. What a weird place to hide treasure. Um Ro, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as these explosives over here. So it's not hiding treasure? A real bummer. What's that thing you've been excited about for the past month? The festival! Oh. Did you just say gulp? This feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the centre of town. She's going to blow up the festival? Not if we stop her. Uh, what was that? Luca looked up from the map. What was that? No, I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the front door. Which means someone's upstairs. 
Shh. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light, and they became statues in the dark. But the, isn't the the secret door still Overhead, open? Creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Hello? A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Uh -oh. Anyone down there? The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. Kind of looks like Rose's dad or something. Uh -oh. Yo! Uh -oh. I'm not here to hurt anyone. Uh -oh. I'm just here to help. Just at the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Huh. Guess it's nothing. Lulu shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Don't. It was too late. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Flaming chicken cup! With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. Rolo? Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Well, I didn't know if it had if I had it in me, but there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rolo, that was awesome. Wait, did you just kill that person? Lucas scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. He sure clobbered him good, Rolo. He knocked out As cold. Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rolo both gasped in stereo. Mr. Tolliver? Chapter 7 The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver